Hi everyone, today we are looking at some of the layout uh, containers that JavaFX has so that you can use them in order to um, provide some kind of a layout uh, to your nodes. So it's things like buttons, um, text, fields, and so on. I'm just very quickly going to use an up basic application, which is going to be just an empty um, scene with a few things inside, maybe two buttons. How about that? So let's go for button one. And then button two, maybe three buttons actually, that should give you that of a feel um, for how the layout uh, works. I'll just quickly add the font to be something a bit bigger. It's button three, that's button two, and that's three. So These are nodes. If you look at them, if you control click in your ID, whatever the ID is, it should generally go to the source. And you'll see that this is a class button, which extends button base, therefore it extends from labeled. And if you keep doing that, eventually you're going to reach node. <coughs> Parent, and there we go. This is the node class. This is the super class of all things that are part of the JavaFX scene graph. So things that you see on the screen. And these nodes can be grouped to be positioned in a specific way. To do that, we normally use layout containers. And well, the very first prompt is VBox, so, so let's go with that. Normally what you do is you create your layout container, you pass the nodes in, typically through the constructor, or you can add um, it also. If, you can also add nodes um, in a different way. Let me just quickly do that. And now we can see, so root, get children, Typically, um, this get children method comes from um, pain, or actually, it also comes from parent. So, some classes in JavaFX, like parent or pain, uh, provided they have publicly accessible get children method, will have the method that you can call using get children and then add. And this is how you can add these nodes uh, if you're not adding them via the constructor. So what we've done here, um, created three buttons, put them inside this vertical box, VBox stands for vertical box, uh, which as the name implies, it just places them, them uh, vertically. So if we run this, we should see um, our application with three buttons in it and those buttons are going to be placed vertically. So here they are. You can also specify the size of your um, container by calling set pref size which is going to set the preferred size width and height. Let's go for 800, 600. And then we'll try a couple more uh, containers. There are lots of them, but we're going to try um, some of the most commonly used ones. So what we can currently see, this entire native window, the look and feel that you get, which looks like and is a Windows uh, window on the Windows operating system. Then inside it, you have the scene which is what we set. If you remember from um, the stage video that we did 
or JavaFX Explore on the stage class. Then stage is the window, scene is the thing that is inside that window. And it needs to have a root. That root is what we just created, which is a vertical box of size 800, 600, which is why the window is as big. And then inside it, we have three uh, what we call controls, things that you can interact with. They're not containers, they're controls. These three controls are inside the container, which is the root node, and they are positioned vertically because the container we created is a vertical box. Now, without stopping this application, how about we do something like this? Hbox. Can you guess what that does? I probably won't be able to rerun this without making it parallel, but anyway, I'm just going to close this. I assume you remember that these are vertically placed because vertical box, and we can start it uh, with the horizontal box, which is going to place them horizontally. So with horizontal boxes, you essentially can get a nice, like a toolbar going, although there is a class for that as well called toolbar. <coughs> And you will notice that these are going from left to right. And these are also stacked from the left side. I'm pretty sure there's a way to stack them in a different spot. I think it's called alignment, set alignment. And the alignment takes one of these. So you type POS, which stands for position, dot, and then you are going to get a bunch of uh, static final constants, so to speak. So let's go for center. You can see that there are various ways to align the content inside the container. So now we're aligning the three buttons that are inside the horizontal box uh, right in the, sort of in the middle because the whole container is six, uh, 800 by 600, so it's the entire window essentially. Uh, and then you find the center point, which is right in the middle. And then you place all the three things horizontally um, as we specified. Now we could change that to a vertical box and then it will still be using the center because the alignment is center, but I'll place them vertically. So you have some options with uh, regards to how you can or how you want them to be placed. Now let's have a look at some other um, containers like, what else is there? Oh, lots of different panes. Now there is border pane um, let me just remember what this is. I think it's the kind of five-way split of the entire um, scene. So for that, there is no set alignment, as you'll notice. I'm going to comment this out. Um, and apparently it doesn't take... Well, it takes all five nodes. Okay. It's much easier to add them uh, one by one because you can specify where they should go. So the border pane is another layered container that splits your area into five regions. The center, left, right, top, bottom. Which is, you know, it's kind of like what the ID view currently is that I'm looking at. You have the bottom view, which is where the so like the command line almost, some um, text messages, the top area, which is the toolbar and other menus. Right hand side is, I think, empty, I guess, but you could have some stuff there. Uh, the left hand side is something that you can open, which is the project explorer window or whatever it's called. So you can see that, you know, when you're talking about editors and stuff like that, it's quite nice to be able to have these different areas. So we could say the top should be button one, uh, left should be button two, and then maybe the bottom should be bottom uh, button three. 
So for the center and for the right side, we didn't set anything. So there's nothing there. Uh, and you will find that this is not quite intuitive because we haven't really set anything. Plus these are buttons, these are not you know, containers. Because if you're thinking about border pane, you're probably thinking about containers to be set to those top, left, bottom, center, and so on, which will then contain the actual content rather than placing the content itself into these. But again, you have options. Um, anything else? There is stack pane. <clears throat> you can probably guess what that's going to do. It's just going to stack them one on top of uh, another. It will place it one, two, three. So you'll actually see just the bottom element or the last element. And all three buttons are exactly uh, on the same spot, which is why we are only seeing the last one added. This is nice for things like backgrounds. If you're kind of building your custom component, custom uh, control, you can have a rectangle to be used as um, a background. And then you can add some text, which is going to be centered automatically. Let's just quickly do that so you can um, get a feel for use cases and such. Um, rectangle, let's go for 150, 40. And then some text over it. Um, the rectangle should be I don't know. Let's set to different color, I guess. Uh, blue. The text is black, I think, by default. So there is the blue rectangle, which acts as a background. It doesn't look too interesting um, here, but you can achieve really nice effects. Um, like if you were to mess around with the text inside and with things like hover, when you're hovering over it, you can change the color and that way you can kind of almost make a button out of it, a custom button. Right, so that's done. Um, as a sort of final note, let's talk about uh, the pain class, which is going to Let's just add those here, uh, button two, button three. So if all else kind of fails and you really want kind of manual control over where things are, then you can directly set either translate X or let's go for layout uh, and position them inside the control, um, inside the container. And that container is called pane. It doesn't do anything in terms of the layout. It has some internal things, but from the perspective of where things are, it will obey what you say. So you can say layout X should be 50, layout X, uh, layout Y should be 50, and then button two, let's place it somewhere in the middle, 400 minus you know, 20, 300 minus 10. That goes for a layout Y. And then we'll just do something like that for button 3. Um, 600 minus 40. So you can have uh, right, um, bottom right is where I'm going for with this, which would be 100. Yeah, something like that. Well, almost. I underestimated the button dimensions, I think. Anyway, so the container 
is now pain, which means stuff that you add into it, you have full control over. So you can move things around as needed. Button one is placed at 50-50. Remember it's X and then Y, Y goes down. So it's 50 and then 50 and then 380, which is 400 minus 20 and then 290. And then finally this thing, which is way over here. And that gives you a lot more flexibility for things like games uh, specifically because you don't in games you don't really have kind of um, a preset layout maybe for the UI only like the user interface is usually going to stay where it is um, whereas things like game objects they move around so this one um, like the pane container is quite useful for that Right, so in this video we looked at various, um, but not all, um, layout containers in JavaFX that you can use in order to lay out your nodes, your controls uh, in the scene graph, and depending on what kind of user interface look you want to achieve, you might even use combinations of them. So you can actually put a vertical box inside a horizontal box, which, is, which could be a part of a border pane. So you can kind of wrap them, which, which is nice. Um, and I think we've covered some of the edge cases as well with things like stack pane and the pane class, if you want to place them manually. On that note, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see everyone in the next video.